my toys. Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the NECA Hunter Predator from the 1994 Alien vs. Predator arcade game. I don't believe these Predators had actual names, so they just call them Hunter Predator, Warrior Predator, Mad Predator, probably what the game referred to them as. This was sort of one of the good guys in the game. There were f up to four player co-op mode in this arcade game. I do remember playing it when I was a kid. Pretty fun stuff. So this is kind of a hero predator. I remember the aliens came down, the humans were fighting them, and a couple predators came to help the humans. I'm assuming that the mad predator was a villain predator in that game, maybe to hunt these guys. I don't exactly remember the entire storyline. So let's check out the packaging. This guy here looks pretty nice. Kind of got a brown tint to him. Looks like he's with the city hunter body. It comes with a disc and a pulse rifle and some kind of spear thing in the background. Hunter Predator, Alien vs. Predator. Here he is on the side. The other side is just generic Predator from the game. Bottom we've got Neck on the barcode. Top we've got Alien vs. Predator. And on the back we've got this awesome old school checklist. Collect them all. We got this guy standing here, the actual plastic figure with Game background, P Hunter, Predator, Hunter Predator, collect them all. The three Predators are finally all out. Then we've got the three aliens, which look absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to get those guys. And the two humans, really looking forward to getting a Lin figure. So, let's go ahead and open this guy up and see just how awesome he really is. Now here's the Hunter Predator out of the package with all of his accessories in their entirety. I think he came, comes with the most accessories of any of the figures from this wave. He has a pulse rifle in a unique color, a large spear, staff type thing, a disc, as well as his shoulder cannon. One of the first things I notice is his color scheme is really cool. He almost looks like a sand predator. Predators are kind of like lizards and it's appropriate to have a brown version kind of blends with the sand. I think it really works good for this guy. It just looks good, looks natural. I also noticed that he's made from the ultimate city hunter body. So all three of these predators are complete reuse, absolutely no new parts. Although I don't actually recognize this weapon from any previous releases. So let's take a quick little look at this guy up close. So like I said, the browns, I like the color. I think it looks natural, it looks pretty good. Don't get me wrong, I'm not super happy about the fact that he's a straight repaint, but the fact that he's based off a completely different character being the one from the 1994 game, I'm pretty happy we got him. So you can see his face, the brown colors. As it goes lower, kind of got some green, nice little contrast there. His feet, looks really cool. One thing that's really sort of awkward and embarrassing about this guy because of the colors they chose Boy, that looks pretty weird. Guy's wearing pretty much a thong. So, let's see what else this guy's about. Before we look at the actual figure a little bit more, let's check out his accessories. He came with four things. Number one, the plasma canister for his shoulder. I went ahead and attached it to his body, so let's check that out real quick. It's brown, matches his armor scheme very nicely. It's exactly the same as City Hunters, kind of this different style right here up down hinge at the bottom a little bit of sort of a ball at the top here as well it can go around and it can go up and down ever so slightly so really not much too much to tell about this i did like how it hooked in it sort of had a groove on both sides where it fit in very nicely it doesn't seem like it's going to fall off at all so next he's got his disc and this is nothing new predators come with discs all the time but this is a new color scheme completely black for the most part on this side and then it's silver tinted, kind of has that contrast, video game style color scheme going on. Here is regular City Hunter's disc. It is literally the same sculpt, which is fine by me. But you can just sort of see the difference in the paint between the two accessories. <clears throat> in addition to that, it fits into his harness very, very nicely. I've had very little problem with this going inside. Well, I'm doing it really quick on screen, but want to really mess with it really get in there right it will stay in there in addition to that he does come with a completely open hand it's his left hand 
where it can easily hold the disc as fingers go through the holes and there really is no problem there. And like I said before, the disc on mine stays in pretty nicely. It's really going to all depend on your guy's individual sculpt. My disc almost feels like it's too big to fit inside the holder, so I have to really sort of force it in there. And that causes it to stand pretty good. I've had lots of other predators where maybe the disc is warped ever so slightly the wrong way, or his holder doesn't quite match it properly, and they really just don't stand well. I've had pretty good luck with this. It doesn't mean necessarily you will. Each one, if it's just a 20th of an inch different, if not less, can ruin the whole operation there. And while looking at a shoulder cannon, if you purchase either the Ultimate City Hunter or the old Predator Accessory Pack, it came with this blast discharge here. Two different kinds it came with. The blue one attaches to the Jungle Hunter style plasma canister, and the red one here attached to the City Hunter style, so I decided to see if this one would fit on here, and it sure does. I had absolutely no problem attaching it. It's a little bit heavy, so it kind of weighs it down, but if you get it just right, it still won't stay up. But it looks pretty cool. Can turn the top, can turn his head, so he's looking at you as he's shooting. And here he is, shooting at a xenomorph, completely blowing its face off. I just cannot get this thing to stay up without holding it up, no matter how I position it. Kind of frustrating. Next, let's check out his large staff. Now, like I said before, I don't think I have this. I just went through all my Predator figures and didn't see anything quite like this. But, boy, I sure could be wrong. We definitely wouldn't have had this in this paint scheme. I don't think... NECA made any new tooling for these figures, that's why I'd be surprised if this was new tooling. But it sure is welcome if it is. Love the paint scheme, kind of basic paint job, old school, sort of crappy graphics, different shading. Really enjoy it, it's going to look nice in his hand. Of course, he can only hold it in one hand because he has the open fist, or open hand on the other side. This one here is going to be intended to hold something like this. Come on, get in there. Must say, I'm liking it. Liking it quite a bit. The color scheme just kind of makes it unique for me. And I like it, just looks very basic and very video game ish. Kind of 16 bit look to me. Next, let's check out his pulse rifle. Probably the accessory I'm most excited about for him. This is a new color variation of the pulse rifle. Kind of has a sandy sort of brown color to it, almost sort of flesh, peach colored. This thing is not exactly what he used in the video game. In the video game, this was one of two Predators that were good guys that came to help the humans fight the Xenomorphs. I believe the Mad Predator was a villain of some kind in that game. I do not exactly remember all the plot points. These two guys fought alongside Marines to take down the Xenomorphs. They used machine gun sort of weapons they weren't pulse rifle and smart gun specific but i love how NECA has interpreted and given them one of these i think it's really cool let's go ahead and check him out holding it i'm gonna say it looks pretty cool pretty different pretty usual it's not something you expect a predator to to see a predator doing holding a human machine gun what's the one time in live action we actually saw that it was in the predator when the fugitive picked up the gun and shot a few people with it he didn't hold it right. I really liked how he understood what it was for and just used it and discarded it. This looks really cool. He holds it well with this hand. He can support it with this hand. It's almost smaller compared to a human on him. It just, I do like the way it looks because it's so unnatural. Him and his partner are going to team up with some humans, take down some xenomorphs. Cannot wait to get the two humans they're making for this video game. When the emissary predators from The Predator come out, they were working with the humans in the film and deleted scenes. I think they will be pretty cool alongside these guys as well. And then yes, the blast effect accessory does fit on the Predator's pulse rifle. I believe this would be the one that came with Vasquez and she had the strapless pulse rifle. There are a couple of different kinds of these blast accessories. One simply has a square in the back with a little peg. And the other one has sort of a square with a piece cut out at the bottom as well, and that is for the strap of the pulse rifle. 
You can kind of see how it would sort of fit around there a little better. And that does allow you to have the Predator acting like a madman and firing two different blast accessories at the same time at this alien. And like I said before, this is not the first variation of the original Pulse Rifle they have made. This would be the original Pulse Rifle that came with Hicks Hudson and a couple of other Marines. This is of course the arcade release. This would be the combo taped together that came with a Ripley, Flamethrower, and Pulse Rifle together. Here's an all black version with no strap that came with the Wayland yutani soldiers from Alien 3. Here's a green version with a strap that came with the Kenner Vasquez. And then here's a strapless regular standard painted version that came with the Vasquez from the final battle where she got killed. I will say that the blast accessories don't work on some of these. The ones that came with the original Marines do not have the hole that the peg for the blast accessory can fit into. But all the later releases will support that. And here are the various figures that I took those weapons from to show as examples. Now that we have taken a very thorough look at his accessories, let's check out the height of this figure. This is a NECA figure. They're traditionally the 7 inch scale. But Predators are taller than humans, so they're usually about 8 inches tall. So this guy here... Looks like he's sitting at about, from the bottom of my finger, about eight and three eighths inches, about a little under eight and a half inches. Next, let's check out this figure's articulation. It's really nothing new here, pretty standard predator articulation. So we've got his head, it can go around, slightly hindered from this shoulder cannon for his hair, and it can go down about that far and up about that far not too bad by itself of course we've got this thing it has a hinge at the bottom and a little ball at the top so it can go around and it can kind of look up and down just a tiny tiny bit then he's got his shoulders and go out about that far very nice soft armor here flexible bendy not preventing much articulation range he's got a bicep cut here he has got double jointed elbows extend completely straight and can go completely up. He can pick his nose, scratch his head, etc. He's got a forearm cut right here. He's got a wrist that can go around. It can also go in and out a little bit. Of course, his wrist blades can come out this far and go back in. <clears throat> On the other side, he has a soft material here. It can almost be pulled off. My point to that is it doesn't obstruct his articulation. He's got an ab crunch here, kind of like a ball in there. It can go up and down, really not much at all, but it can sure go around. And then he has another bit of articulation here, not just a swivel, but it's sort of a ball in there. Has a little bit of up and down articulation, and he can move around pretty nicely. Not quite as good as the newer figures. Then his hips. I eh, don't really want to push it and go out about that far. Forward, that far, back, really all the way. Just because his butt is made of this soft material. Looks absolutely horrible when you do this. But it's not connected down below. So it does allow his legs to do a little bit more than some of the other predators. So he's got this ball inside of here. It allows you, and it has additional articulation like so. So not only can it go up and down and out, but you can also adjust the position of his sort of thigh area. Double joint knees. That's as far as they go. Then he's got the nice ball in his foot. Can go around, up and down just pretty nicely actually. And then it can tilt a bit, all with one sort of ball inside of there. Now that we have loaded his articulation, let's check out how much reuse there is in this figure. Compared to some previous figures, obviously he's made with the Ultimate City Hunter body. And honestly, it looks like complete reuse. The only real differences would be the coloring. As well as he doesn't have the belt, he doesn't have the sort of bones. He doesn't have this extra piece attached into the back that allows his combi stick to attach. But there is a hole where it would attach, as you can see right here. 
beyond that, it does look to be completely identical. Well, no. Shoulder can is definitely done differently. Okay. Well, there's something different at least. Beyond that, from the toes to the top, it is truly the same figure. But like I said before, what really sucked me in is that this is made with a completely different character from the 1994 arcade game. And this was from the movie Predator 2. The fact that it's a different representation of a different actual Predator on my shelf is what sucked me in and got me 100% in. Don't get me wrong, I'm becoming a completist, so I would get all the variations at this point, but I didn't used to be that way. Next here he is with the entire wave of Predator figures from this arcade game. On the far left we've got the Warrior Predator, and then the Hunter Predator, and then the Mad Predator. These two guys are both made with the ultimate Jungle Hunter body and are pretty much identical to each other except for the heads. And then he's made with the ultimate City Hunter body. So NECA effectively put no new tooling to these guys except possibly for that staff or spear which may have already been molded for previous Predators. Might be with a Predator variation I don't have or something they plan to use in the near future. But it works. It works for me. It is a little bit annoying, but honestly, if I go back in time, I would have bought these figures over and over and over again. These two are the good guy predators that teamed up with the humans, and I believe he was a boss, some kind of villain in the film. And when I say film, I mean arcade game. Then here, both these guys, both wielding their human weapons, getting ready to jump on in. Here he is compared to another video game Predator figure. I believe this is the Jungle Hunter from an NES game. This is based off the non-Ultimate Jungle Hunter body, so he's a little bit shorter than the City Hunter because he's on the Ultimate body. And since we're comparing to other video game figures, let's not forget about this guy. He's from the 2010 Alien vs. Predator video game. He doesn't look very video gamey or cartoony because video games really don't look like that anymore. He's based off the Alien vs. Predator body. And here he is next to a warrior alien from an Aliens arcade game. I don't know if I've ever actually played that arcade game. I guess he was pink in the arcade game. You can see he has a different sort of shading, kind of like these arcade figures have as well. And I almost forgot I had this guy. This is a dog alien from, I believe, an NAS game as well. He has this weird two-tone shading thing where he's brown on his left side and blue on his right side. If you turn him the other way, he does kind of match this Predator pretty nicely. Here he is compared to some Ultimate Predator single releases that were made pretty recently by NECA. On the left, we've got the Ultimate Ahab release, and on the right, the Ultimate Fugitive release. Now here he is compared to the most recent series of Predator figures. These three were non-Ultimate figures, and they cost a little bit less than Ultimate figures, but really they have the exact same articulation and just as many accessories, causing a little bit of confusion with me. Here he is compared to two Ultimate Predators. These are the two most recent NECA Predator releases before this arcade wave. These are from a two-pack. The Bad Blood 2-pack, on the left we've got an Ultimate Bad Blood Predator, and on the right we've got the Ultimate Enforcer Predator. Here he is next to the Thermal Fugitive Predator from The Predator. This was a Target exclusive. He's a pretty recent NECA release. I must say that all the releases NECA has made ever since their year plus long hiatus have been absolutely excellent. The quality control is better. I have had a couple of minor issues with Machiko and one of these Arcade Predators. But beyond that, their execution has been great, detailing great, sculpt amazing, and paint jobs are great as well. Next, I'd like to compare him to all the various Predator figures from the various films. First, let's look at him compared to the Ultimate Jungle Hunter from the first Predator movie. Next, here he is compared to the Ultimate City Hunter from Predator 2. The exact same sculpt as this guy. Here he is next to the Alien vs. Predator figures. We've got Scar, Celtic, and Chopper. Here he is next to Wolf from Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. This is an older NECA figure, which means he is less articulated and a little bit shorter. NECA has actually confirmed that they are going to be making an ultimate version of Wolf. They say it will be out in 2019 this year, 
but I expect to see it at the beginning of 2020. Here he is compared to the Predators from the movie Predators, Berserker, Tracker, and Falcon. NECA has mentioned possibly visiting these guys in ultimate form, but it wouldn't be till at least 2020, which tells me probably 2021, if not later. And then here he is next to the Fugitive from the most recent film, The Predator. I also have the Thermal Vision Predator from this film. I cannot wait to get the upgrade and the two emissaries and whatever else they plan to release from the film that they have not shown us yet. Here he is next to a xenomorph from the film Aliens. This is an ultimate xenomorph. Notice the xenomorph is a little bit taller than the Predator, as he should be. And then here he is next to a couple of engineers from the movie Prometheus. They do scale pretty nicely with the Predator figures. And then here he is next to some various humans from the Alien and Predator lines. Here he is in combat with some of Dutch's team from the first film. We've got Dutch, Hawkins, Billy, Anna, and Dylan. Cannot wait to complete this team eventually. Here he is sitting in the Bone Throne. So as you can see, he can certainly achieve a sitting position. And then just cause, here's the entire wave sitting in three Bone Thrones. And here he is on the Blade Fighter. He can achieve the pose necessary to put him on there, and it can shove the clearance. I removed his shoulder cannon. It obstructed this thing from shutting very well. And then just cause, here are all three of the Predators from this wave on three different Blade Fighters. So all in all, this is a pretty solid figure. I must say I absolutely love his paint scheme. I think it looks pretty cool and natural on this guy. I'm not happy that it's pretty much 100% reuse. I think my favorite Predator from the series was the Warrior Predator, partially because of the smart gun he came with. I would rate this figure approximately a 7 out of 10, and the entire wave gets that same rating. They look nice, but the reuse and a couple other things prevent me from giving them a great, great score. Anyway, this was D Hunter. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you want to see additional videos from me, press subscribe. If you have any comments about the video, post them below. If there's anything you did not like about the video, post it below. If you have any additional action figure review requests, post them below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys real soon. The next Predator figure to be released is going to be the Golden Angel Ultimate figure. It should be out by the end of this month.